This week in 1999, Squirt's Talk Philadelphia had just debuted on the South 56. At the same time, in week two of the NFL season, the Eagles were playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This would also mark the debut of one of the most important Eagles, not only in the last 20 years, but in franchise history. Doug Peterson started the first half of that game against the Buccaneers, and he was not doing very well. So at halftime, Andy Reid decided to take him out and put in that year's first round draft pick, Donovan McNabb. What's happening right now, you can hear the crowd noise, is Donovan McNabb is in the game. The NFL debut of the number two pick in the draft this year, the rookie out of Syracuse, Donovan McNabb. Now, if McNabb's debut was anything but memorable, because the Eagles lost that game 19-5, and McNabb only threw for 26 yards. However, following that, McNabb would go on to lead the Eagles to an 11-5 season the season after, and multiple NFC Championship appearances in a row would follow, including a Super Bowl appearance in 2005. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, you'll never have to be cigarettes, Tom. Oh, this you crazy mother. Welcome to another edition of Sports Talk Philadelphia here on LaSalle TV. I'm your host, Josh Abrams. Today we're going to talk about the Eagles and their sluggish game this past week against the Atlanta Falcons. And then we're going to talk about some Phillies as they look to sneak their way into the playoffs in a long race there. Uh, but first we're going to talk about Eagles and on hand with me today is a great panel to talk Eagles with me. Uh, Gia Lancey, Jack Rohr, and Caleb is going to, we're going to talk some Eagles today. and. Uh, you know, this is just, uh, it's a very, very rough, rough start to the season, for me at least. Uh, this team has gotten off to such a sluggish start, especially in the first half. And the big point that I'm going to start off with today is that if we want to see the Eagles come up with a big win this Sunday, we need to start with the ball. I can't watch the defense give up yards on the first possession and then watch the offense come back on and try to use the passing game to a very high degree to get them back in it. We got to get the ground game going early. And this is, and it just irks me because I can't watch an, a, a, an offense this talented go so stagnant on the field. I feel like Doug Peterson just has too many weapons at this point, And like, he's kind of confused at like what, what to do. Like, I'm so disappointed with how he is not using Jordan Howard to his advantage whatsoever. Like we are not seeing him on the field enough at all. Help. What seemed to be the igniter in the Redskins game where they came back from that 17 nothing deficit was Deshaun Jackson. That's why they couldn't get a start at all in the Falcons game. They had some stuff going, but it wasn't enough. They need that big play down the field type guy, and he's injured right now. And that just stagnates the offense. Aguilar couldn't do enough. He still kind of drops the ball every once in a while. We all saw that one. What was it, like third down, down the sideline? Oh, my God, that hurt. Ugh. It's just Aguilar and Ertz aren't enough. You lose the rest of your receiving, and it's just, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, I think Sunday's going to be, I think it's going to be a harder game than a lot of people expect. I think the Lions are, they're a really underrated team. I think they have a lot of good players on that team that just don't have big names yet. But I think it's going to be a big problem for the Eagles having Alshon, Deshaun, and Dallas Goddard all questionable right now. So we don't, we're really thin at wide receiver. So we'll see if the run game can step up this week. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the, this was just such a tough game, not only because of the injuries, but because of the, the lack, of offensive, um, lack of offensive potential there right now. It's just very concerning. I mean, obviously, Aguilar was going to lead the team in receptions, given the injuries. Um, but the, the biggest problem for me, and it may be a little bit hard to see on that graphic there, but we only had one sack again, and it was from the safety, a safety that I don't think is really that good. Last week it was Tim Jernigan, and now he's gone. I don't know. I don't know where to start with this defense. Is is it? Is it? I really maybe the defense isn't that talented enough to get to the quarterback and be able to sustain the the trouble. So what I think was, I think coming into this season, the Eagles had a goal. They had Malik Jackson and Fletcher Cox. 
So I feel like they thought they could release a lot of pressure, having them push up the middle, and maybe the, that could help the defensive ends out getting more sacks. Because as we all know, the Eagles' defensive ends have a hard time getting sacks. We especially lost Chris Long last year, and we lost Michael Bennett. They both were one of the leaders in our teams in sacks. So it's going to be really hard, especially with the two defensive tackles out, because you're going to get Fletcher Cox being double team now. So our de defensive ends definitely need to step up this week. That Sendejo sack was beautiful, though. <laughs> Shot right through the line. I loved watching the replays on that. Um, but it's just, again, it's injuries. With what, Malik Jackson and now Tim Jernigan out. It's just Fletcher Co Cox on the interior. <laughs> and then on the outside, you have Brandon Graham and uh, Derek Burnett, right? Yeah, but they're just not, it's not enough. You need that fourth guy, and that guy just hasn't been there. He gets hurt at the beginning of each game. So, I mean, you just, there's not enough pressure. All right, well, let's go to the other side of the ball because I think really we can. We had, the, we had our injuries, obviously, on both sides of the ball, and they were more geared towards the wide receiving core, so it's pretty understandable why Carson might not have had such a good game. But the running game, however, it is absolutely I, – I, I, I'm at a loss of words right now for how poor our running game has been this season. I don't understand – you know, I understand giving Darren Sproles – the first couple of touches in the first game, but he got way too many touches then. He still didn't touch the ball in this game, and they still didn't get at anywhere near the amount of running yards. They didn't even get 50 yards, guys. Like, I don't know, what, I don't know where to begin with this running game. What, what, is, what is it? The guy who was doing the big running in the beginning of that Redskins game was Jordan Howard, and he gets zero touches. I understand, especially trying to get Miles Sanders touches. He's young. He's got to get experience. So I understand that his running also isn't as good right now. He's trying to get used to NFL-level defenses. But Jordan Howard needs to get more touches. Darren Sproles shouldn't be getting nearly as much. He should be their third option at back. Jordan Howard, should, Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders should be top two, and they're just it's not. Jordan Howard's just not doing anything right now. I think the biggest problem, and I'll let you guys comment on this afterwards, is that this running back by committee concept is just taking over the NFL. And I understand not wanting to have a, a bell cow workhouse running back like Todd Gurley was last year. But, you know, when you're switching players out every other play, how are they going to figure out where they fit in the offense? That's what I was saying. Last year, well, I've passed three years, I think, when uh, Jordan Howard was on Chicago, he led, like, I think he was top three in the NFL for rushes, attempts. So, and I mean, it, and if you come back, you're coming to Philadelphia and he's getting three to six carries a game. I mean, he's a, he's a high volume back, like, he needs carries to get going in the game. You can't just throw him in for a couple plays and expect him to break out for a big touchdown. G, do you have any opinions on I that? I mean, I just, I just think that Doug Peterson's just really not using the run game. I, I mean, for me, it's his fault. Like, I think it's, it's really him that needs to put this into play, but I don't know. He, I think the ball just needs to be ran way more. It's like 2015 Phoenix Suns, with that three-point guard experience. There's too many cooks in the kitchen. You need to narrow it down. Two is enough. How does he get a Suns reference in I there? just like, had to. I thought of it, and I was like, I got to say it now. <laughs> but that, that's part of the problem. And when I said in the beginning where we, we need to get the ball first, and establish the run game early, that's how you're going to set the tone, and that's how you're going to get up early. You realize the, pat the first two games, we've gone, we've gone down early first, and we, for whatever reason, can't recover in the first quarter. If the I can't even begin to imagine what this city will do if, you know, given all of the tangibles, if we can't get anything going in the first quarter, how's anyone going to enjoy going to a an Eagles game? Well, I mean, honestly, the past few years, it's been the same problem. Somehow they, like, made up for it, though. But I, I don't know how they've done it the past few years because every game is slow. It's, it's just been the same thing after over and over again. That slow start to the first quarter just kills any momentum you could possibly have. It's watching the other team get the f ball first and go right down the field and score and then doing absolutely nothing directly after. It kills me to watch. And I, it kills the players, I'm guessing. It's hard to watch because they've played the Redskins and they've played the Falcons. Like, the Falcons are all right team, but they're no, they're no Patriots. They're no Seahawks. They're no Cowboys. So imagine if we start off slow to those guys, I mean, there's no way you're going to come back in that game. I think that's a really good point, though. I mean, to me, I think that the Falcons were a good matchup for us. I mean, like, their defense wasn't crazy good, but it wasn't – I don't think they were awful. I mean, especially against us, they weren't. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think Matt Ryan's going to be a good QB no matter what day it is. So I think, that, 
I think that they're always a good game against us. And I mean, even in the playoffs a few years ago, like that was a great game. Yeah. I mean, and I think that they're just always a good matchup with us. Sure. I mean, they always play us tough. We always play them tough. I mean, the problem is that when, when you have a secondary like we have, and oh. they have two wide receivers that are pretty, you know, pretty good, Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, you know, getting off to a slow start like that just isn't going to work. Uh, but let's go to the scouting report and the picks for this upcoming matchup with the Lions. Uh, Let's talk quickly on the scouting report real quick. Uh, Kenny Galladay, he's a 6'4", 200-plus pound, 25-year-old wide receiver. He is primed to become one of the better wide receivers this game will see at some point in, in the future. But, uh, you know, again, we just talked about the secondary. I mean, Kenny Galladay isn't Julio Jones quite yet, but he's still a very good wide receiver. He's, he's, like you say, he's very tall and he's fast. He can get down the field really quick. And Matt Stafford has a great arm, so he can get the ball to him really easily. I think Ronald Darby just he needs to step up. Some corner needs to step up. You can't you can't have the ball thrown at you 12 times and have eight receptions for 130 yards and two touchdowns. You can't do that. Um, yeah, Ronald Darby is absolute trash. Like I don't know how how he's still on our team, honestly. Like uh, d he did one good thing, one good thing. One good. I don't remember what it he is. He had an interception. Oh, oh, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, but that was it. And then he celebrated. Like, he. Uh, <laughs> they're over. I'm yeah, done. They're, I'm, they're over, I'm so done with they're that. They're overhyping that. Um, we, we're running out of time, so let's just go right to the picks here. Uh, we're still feeling optimistic this week, at least, at least I am. Um, I have them <laughs> winning in a close one, 28 to 21. Uh, I'm not going to be so surprised about the 28, but we just, you know, we have to limit the Lions, and we have to get off to a fast start. That's just. The way I, that's just the way I think, and I, I'm feeling a big Zach Ertz game. Yeah, I got the Eagles win 24 to 14 in this game. I just think since Al, a lot of the receivers are out this game, I think, I think Doug's gonna, I think they're gonna run the ball a lot this week. I think Jordan Howard, I think this is gonna be his coming out week in Philly, so. So, Gia and Jack, how are you guys feeling? Um, I got Eagles 21 to seven, uh, and I think, I think Carson Wentz is gonna have a good game. I think he's really gonna come out and surprise us all. I maybe, maybe I don't think it, but I hope it. <laughs> I've got the Eagles 31-7. to seven. I'm going wow. to the game this weekend, so i got to believe in big. I want to see some offense and some defense. Brandon Graham, we're going to end this game with 15 sacks or something like that. Oh. Jack's, that's, Jack's, that's bold. That's very bold. Predictions. Jack's going to be the good luck charm for the Eagles but, this weekend. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk some Phillies, so stay tuned. Exposure to blue light can mess with your sleep and memory cycle, so make sure you limit your screen time at least two hours before you go to bed. According to the Mayo Clinic, exercising has stress-busting benefits by bumping up your endorphins and improving your mood.
Welcome back to Sports Talk Philly here on LaSalle TV. We're going to go right into the Phillies discussion. Um, all right, guys, so we're somehow, some way still in it. Not much has changed since the last show. Uh, we did just lose the game we played today. It was a 5-4 loss in Atlanta. We won the series, so that's obviously a, a positive sign. But you can't worry about winning series at this point in time. You've got to worry about winning the games. Um, so where do, you guys, where do you guys sit in terms of your mindset, your attitude, and just your, your – what's your thinking for this Phillies team? I'm not going to lie, I'm not very confident in them. <laughs> I mean, they got a three-game away series in Cleveland coming up. They got a five-game in Washington. And then they got three at home against Miami. And you know how they've been against Miami this year. So – I mean, the pitching is just its brutal to watch, especially when you have Aaron Nola on the mound today for the sweep. You'd think he'd show up for this game, especially when you've got, like, what, 14, 13 games left? So. Yeah, I mean, again, I think the schedule is really hard upcoming, so, like, I'm not confident either, but you never know with this team. Like, some days you're like, oh, it's over. And then, like, they come back, so, like, you really don't know. But bullpen, is, there's no hope for that. Right, and, and the funny part about it is that you, you mentioned the bullpen. Um, this team is just as inconsistent as they are consistent. <laughs> uh, yes, our bullpen has been, you could say, gener generally bad this season, but there have been games this year where they either keep us in it or they win the game for us when a starter goes out early or any kind of situation. They have come up in those situations before, but at the same time, they also haven't. We've also seen... Jared Hughes come on the mound for two pitches and then get taken right out after giving up a home run. I mean, you can think of any kind of wild scenario with this team, and we've gone through it. Um, let's talk about Noah. I mean, he was, the, he was the top three pitcher last year in terms of Cy Young voting, and then all of a sudden this year he, he doesn't even look like his, his old self mm. before he turned into a Cy Young pitcher. What do you guys think is going on with him? I mean, it's really frustrating to watch, and it's disappointing. I mean, that's like the whole Philly's only like ace. You call him an ace, right? Yeah, yeah, that's their only pitcher right now. And I mean, the last five starts, he hasn't been even close to being an ace. So it's really disappointing to see. I mean, I think that it just it just stinks because like we had such high hopes. Like I remember like last season of Sports Talk Philly, like we were coming to this, we're like, oh, Nola's the answer. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't even Harper. It was like, Nola's the answer because we have no one else in the bullpen. And like, we were trying to get people, but that hasn't worked. And it's just right. a real big disappointment, honestly. Right. Part, of it, part of it also has to do with the fact that we don't, like, we don't have anybody else other than Nola, even with Jake Arrieta. I mean, we can go on and on about the pitching staff, um, but I want to try and make this a little bit of a positive <laughs> sports talk, because there have been positives about this Phillies team, and one of them is JT Real Muto. You're not going to be able to tell me, you, you can't give me another catcher in baseball right now that, that excels at the position better than this guy right here. I mean, 43 runners thrown out this season is just insane. His fielding percentage is great, and he, he can do it all on offense, too. This has to be another guy. We locked up Harper for the rest of his career. <laughs> I'd say this is our second priority in terms of offense. Yeah, it, it definitely, this offseason is definitely number one priority. It's locking up JT Romuto. I mean, he broke his career like highs like three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Like, he's just killing it this season. I mean, his pop time for catchers like is like way quicker than anybody else. He's, he's e easily the best catcher in baseball. Yeah, and I mean, he does everything right. You know what I mean? Like, and... I mean, as of right now, in my opinion, he's the best player on the Phillies, and offensively and defensively. So. Yeah, so that's certainly a, a positive sign for that. Um, let's talk about Reese Hoskins, though. I always loved Reese Hoskins for how patient he was at the plate, but I didn't realize that he would take that to an extreme this season. Uh, his batting average, I think, is sitting at around 240 when it was sitting at around 260, 270, maybe even in the 280s in the beginning of the year. How do you guys feel about him? Because I felt coming into the season that he was going to be our future, our all-star first baseman for the future. He looks like to be our first baseman for the future, but not necessarily an all-star. So what do you guys think about him? I mean, I know he's had a really rough second half of the uh, yeah. season, but I, I still have confidence in him. I mean, we saw what he's done before. I mean, every baseball player goes through a really hard stretch like this. I mean, you've you got to feel for the guy. I mean, he wants, to, he wants to go out there and hit three home runs a game. He's really trying. It's just it's not coming to him right now. But 
it sucks that it's coming at like a point in the season where they need to start winning games and he's not coming through at all. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, the big word for him is just inconsistent, but I still think that he is a Philly guy. I think that they're going to keep him and I think he's going to do something for us next year if we do have him next year. Do we have him next year? Yeah, yeah we should. Now. I think yeah. he's still on his rookie deal. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, so, I, like, I still think that he should be in Philly and I think that he'll produce eventually, but I think that it's just one of those things that, you know, you got, you're in something in baseball sometimes. So. Right. So you guys said come. You guys said at the beginning of the segment that you're not feeling too confident about them for the playoffs. Uh, let's take a look at the standings because we, you know we were talking about before the show started where were they at in terms of the standings. For a while they were hover, they were in the wild card. Then they started to slowly fall down. But even even with being four games back now three and a half, depending on how those other teams do. I mean. It, we're, it's the last couple of weeks we've been playing the game where not only do we need to win, but we also need help. And I just don't think there's, I don't think any of those teams are going to be generous enough to help us get into the playoffs. They're, they're too much better than we are. Yeah, I mean, unless the Phillies somehow pull out like four out of five games in Washington and pull themselves like right in that, right in it, I mean, I, it's, it's going to be a really hard road for them well, the rest they, of the season. They also, I mean, we, we did look at that Washington series last week and say that was going to be the series. But, I mean, you can't look too far ahead ever. You have, I mean, they have to go into Cleveland, who's a game and a half, a, a half game out of their respective wild card race. So, what do you, so, I mean, do you guys have any kind of confidence that they can go into Cleveland and maybe make some noise there? They're going to have to hit. They're the, that's the plain and simple. Reese Hoskins is have to start hitting. Everybody's going to have to start, and the pitching's got to improve, especially starting pitching. We can't have our starters going four to five innings. We need at least go six to seven, and then the bullpen. They got to be obviously they got to be more consistent. And both things you just said aren't going to happen because like that's what we've been saying all season. You know what I mean? The bullpen needs to improve. The hitting needs to improve. And from those people that we need to step up aren't stepping up. So like I am confident, but like the things that they need to fix are not going to be fixed. So, like, they need to rely on the things that they can kind of do right, but it's not a lot, so. Yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're looking at the players, and at this point, the players control their own destiny. But in terms of beyond them, you know, we're, I, and I think this is going to be a topic of discussion every time we talk Phillies. I mean, Gabe Kapler, Matt Klintak, I don't even want to mention Matt Klintak's buddy that, <laughs> that he partners with. I mean, they, they're, they're just such a poorly run organization just based off of them. Hold on. You what? know I love Gabe the Babe, though. I, so I, like, I know you do. Like, I, I just think he needs to get, like, like I know, it's the second season, whatever. But, like, he just needs to, he's not in it yet. Like, and I think once he gets in it, everyone's going to be like, oh, my gosh, we love Gabe. So, like, just give him some time. What, what's your opinion on that? <laughs> I mean, I think him and Kapler – if you get rid of uh, Kapler and Klentak, they got to go together. I mean, you can't keep both. And I think the really frustrating thing is the season we knew we had pitching problems, and he didn't address it at all, Klentak. So, and I, I mean, Gabe Kapler's made a lot of poor decisions in this season. I mean, he's starting like that left field Perella, like over like Adam Hazley, like with like 10 games. Like, come on, like, I just, I don't agree with a lot Gabe Kapler does. Yeah, and I, and I really like the point you made about Klentak and, and uh, the fact that he didn't address any of the, of the pitching, and not even that, just throughout the season, as the season goes along, he's saying how, and him and, him and his friend, I, I, I can't say his name because I despise him so much, they have the mindset that if we don't make the playoffs, oh, it's not a big deal, we don't make the playoffs. And also they have the mindset that, oh, you, you, lose, you lose this series, you lose this game, no, you just get them tomorrow. You get them next time. Like you can't ever think that in the world of sports. You're playing. You're playing every day to win and to get better. That's not a winning mindset, nor is it a mindset to get the organization and the players to perform better. Um, all right. So that's going to do it for the Phillies talk. Let's move to Fast Five. We're going to try and change things up this year, where I ask the panelists questions about sports stuff going on outside of Philadelphia. Uh, Caleb, we're going to start with you. It does have to do with the Eagles in some ways. Uh, do you want Jalen Ramsey to become an Eagle? Absolutely. Okay. I would give the two first round picks for Jalen Ramsey right away. Just after seeing these past two weeks with our corners, I think adding him to that defense, I think, just puts that team to another level. I mean, even throwing him on any defense puts a team to another level. So, 
All right, Gia, we're gonna come to you uh, with some MOB talk real quick. There's a lot of changes that seem to be happening coming up in the next couple of years. Uh, is there anyone that stands out to you? Anyone that you'd like to just like express your opinion on? Yeah, I mean, I know that they're talking about like putting nets around the entire field, which like I think is ridiculous. And and I mean, I'm just kind of disappointed with the amount of things that they want to change because like baseball is such a American classic sport, and like I don't like I know people want to like make it a faster sport too, but like that's not what it's about. You know, it's about a slow game that you sit back and enjoy. And like I just really don't want them to change all the rules. I just I love the classic baseball. Yeah, it seems like that's not going to happen. It, it stinks. Uh, Caleb, we're going to come to you with the college football question. Who's going to win it all this year? I know it's really early. We're only a couple weeks in, but who's your favorite? Uh, I got to go with Clemson again. I mean, they, they beat Alabama last year. They got, I, my personal opinion, I think they have Trevor Lawrence as the best quarterback in college football, and he's only a sophomore. So, I mean, he's going to be a future number one overall pick. I think he's definitely going to lead that team far in the playoffs again. All right, Gia, we're going to come to you talking about the 2020 Olympics. The USA basketball team played absolutely poorly last year, or this past tournament. They're going to add a couple new players, such as Lillard and Curry, but do you think that's going to be enough for them to place next year? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I just don't think that there's any other teams that are even going to stand a chance against them, and I think um, Dame and Curry are going to just really help out that team, and I, don't, I just don't think anybody else will even come close. All right, Caleb, and finally, we're going to come to you with uh, another NFL question. The injury bug has been very prevalent in the NFL this year, and it most recently caught a lot of quarterbacks, including Ben Roethlisberger. He's done for the year, for sure. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's going to come back? I think it's going to be a really hard decision for him. I mean, as we've seen, there's a lot of players that are like starting to really think about their health for their future, and they've been cutting their careers early. Like We've seen Gronk and Andrew Luck, both young guys, and they stopped. So. But Big Ben's older right now. I think he's won a Super Bowl, so I think it. I think it'd be hard for him to come back next year. I think he might be done. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Sports Talk Philly. Make sure you guys go on and check us out on social media at Sports Talk LTV. Also, check out the LaSalle TV YouTube page. You can also find us on Facebook and even check out the Com Center page from the LaSalle.edu/slash LaSalle TV. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week. We thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you tune in next Thursday, and we'll see you next week.